In this tutorial, we are going to look at how to make objects dynamically react to being in shadows that are cast by the sun. Let's begin with the general setup for this feature to work with all other systems of SRS. Locate your game mode blueprint. In my case, it's under third person blueprint blueprints right here. If you don't have one created, simply hit right click, create a new blueprint class and here select game mode base and then name it whatever you want. In my case, I already have this one that's here by default. Open this. You might get into a different window where you just have to click open full blueprint editor and then you get into this window and here you have to add component and the component is called BP Tint Game Mode Component SRS. Add this and our game mode is now configured. Now close the game mode and simply in the world settings select your game mode if you haven't already done that and with this we're done with the general setup. Adding the shadow manager to an actor is very simple. Simply open your actor, simply search for shadow manager on the components and add this. Now go to your construction script and execute the function make mesh dynamic. This will automatically uh, create a reference to the shadow manager we just added and now drag your mesh into this mesh input right here. And now your mesh will dynamically react to lighting conditions. For reference, the character is using a cell shaded material that looks like this. If you don't understand what's going on, please watch the tutorial on custom materials using SRS for mobile. With the shadow manager now added to our actor, our character will dynamically react to walking into shadows that are cast by the sun. We can also customize how this effect appears. Go back into your character, open the shadow manager blueprint and here you'll find three categories. Let's look at the visual parameters first. The tint is a tint that gets applied to your entire character. So if we make this a bit darker and then walk into the shadow in game or drag our actor into shadow, you'll see that our actor will get significantly darker. The shadow intensity parameter controls the intensity of these shadows. If you set this to 1, the shadows will appear pretty much as they did before, only being darkened through the tint parameter. If you set this to 0, the shadows will disappear. The other parameters control the scale of the highlights and rimlights and the shadows. By default, highlights and rimlights get a bit smaller, while the shadow, meaning this part right here, gets a little bit bigger. In order to understand the technical parameters, you'll have to roughly understand how the shadow manager works. The shadow manager regularly tries to detect if something is between the character and the sun, that is blocking the light from reaching your character and therefore casting a shadow onto your character. This is done using a trace. In the technical parameters, you can control some settings about this trace. The first is the trace length. It simply controls how far this trace should go until it just says, okay, we didn't hit anything, let's stop checking. By default, this is set to 10,000. If we set this to something smaller, like 500, you'll see that even though our character was previously in shadow, the trace isn't long enough to hit this wall, so our character will not appear in shadow. By default, the trace starts at the origin of your character. You can, however, move this point around using this trace offset point. So right now, the trace starts here at the pelvis area. If you set this to something like negative 80, the trace would now start at the bottom of the character. Lastly, the transition parameters. The time between checks parameter controls how regularly this trace that checks if something is between the character and the sun should be done. Reducing this value will make the reaction to shadows a bit snappier. However, it will come at the cost of performance. The fade duration parameter controls how long it will take for the character to fade into being fully shadowed or not shadowed at all. If we increase this to, let's say, 5 and we go in-game, it will take a long time for the character to not appear as if he was in a shadow. If you like the reaction to be very snappy, note that you cannot set the fade duration to something smaller than time between checks. So right now with time between checks at 0.5 seconds, 0.5 is the fastest we can have. We could however decrease the time between checks, so the reaction is a bit more snappy.